Oh. Recently got something back in the post. Well, actually it's something I sent away and I only picked it back up last night again. And uh, I thought I would do another unboxing. Now I'm going to do the same as i done before and not mention anything in the title or the description box on what's in the box for at least the first week or so. So the only way you'll know what's in this is if you watch the video through as I open it. So let's get started. Okay to get started I need something nice and sharp to uh, cut my way into this box and this little cutting tool will do the job nicely. You'll notice the box probably has more packing tape on it than it does cardboard. Uh, the reason for that is my RFD opened the box when he got it just to check through it. So I resealed it again uh, for the video. But the stuff packaged up inside the box hasn't been touched yet so you'll see it as I open it. I probably did too good a job of resealing the box by the looks of it. But we're into it now. Okay, this looks like a nice handy package to start with. I need a nice delicate sharp cutting tool. Oh, this 10 inch gully I'll do instead. Ah, a 200cc buddy ball. Okay, the rest of this stuff here I had to pick through as a lot of it was just stuffed in there to pick up space. And I needed to make sure I didn't throw something out that was wrapped up in it instead. Here we have a couple of magazines. Two 10 shot magazines and a trigger shoe, all nicely serviced. Ah, we'll get into the large package now. Need another nice, small, delicate, oh, let's just lift this big silver gully instead. Oh, gully in Northern Ireland is a slang for cutting tool or knife. And that's a big knife. Very sharp too. Ah, for those of you in the know, you'll probably recognise what this is by now. So, let's have a closer look at it. Yes, it's my Mark II BSA Super 10. Just recently back from being fully blueprinted by John Bowkett. At first appearance, the rifle doesn't seem to be much different from when it was first sent out to John Bowkit. Except for the main thing, the barrel is a lot shorter than what it used to be. Plus, John has removed the Sandwell Field Sports shroud and cut the end of the barrel with a half inch UNF thread so I can fit any silencer I want to. And he looks as if he has done uh, a re-crowning job as well. If you look carefully into the breech, you'll see that the end of the barrel uh, is silver. John shortens the barrels from the breech end instead of the muzzle end, and then refinishes them and recuts the transfer port. John also does a bit of work on the body balls to match the uh, blueprinting on the rifle and he fits the little red o-rings on them which he says he's found to be the best he's ever used but he said the threads in my bottle were showing signs of wear and it would be a good idea to buy a new bottle to replace it. I also picked up a second hand Mark III Beach Super 10 stock which I painted with a Krylon camouflage paint in olive colour. Why you may say when I've got a nice custom stock sitting in the corner? Well, I just wanted to try something different really. And this will give you an idea of what the whole lot's going to look like when it's uh, put together. Now, a good few months have passed on since that and I've really put the rifle through its paces. And one of the things I have done since is buy myself a brand new body ball on the right here. 
I haven't yet sent it away to John Bowkit to work on as part of the blueprinting process, but it does work in the rifle uh, in standard form quite well anyhow. You can see here that the old bottle, even when it's screwed tight into the gun, there's a good bit of movement in it, so definitely the threads on it um, have seen better days. But I'll use the old bottle for my range test, as that was the one that was sent to John Bowkit to work on. But to do that, I first need to fully charge the bottle. Now, I used two divers tanks to fill my rifles. It was a technique told to me by another shooter years ago. I don't know what the technique's called. I'm sure it has a name, and I'm sure somebody will enlighten me in the comments below. But generally, I start off with the tank that has the lowest pressure. This tank here has about 160 bar in it. Once that's filled the body bottle as far as it'll go, I close the valve off, bleed off the excess air, and unscrew the body bottle. The second diver's tank here is almost full with just over 200 bar in it and I use it to top the body bottle up to its maximum pressure of 200 bar. Doing this I get more full charge fills than I would just using one bottle. Now when the first diver's tank's pressure drops down to about 100 bar or so I'll get it fully recharged then swap the tanks over so that I use it to finish the charge off in the body bottle and use the second tank to start the charge. I hope that makes sense. Another thing I was very quick to add to the combo was a Virac silencer. Since John cut the original barrel of 19 inches down to 12 and a half, he had to remove the Sandwell Field Sport shroud, which no longer fits now, so I needed a silencer. And as you can see, the Virac silencer is just a nice neat fit over the body bottle. I don't know if you'll notice the difference on the film footage, but it is quite effective. I'm just firing the rifle here without any pellets in it, which can be a wee bit louder at times. Now John recommended the Air Arms field pellets as that's what he done his cornograph test with but I've been using the JSB exact jumbos which is more or less the same pellet and I've been getting pretty good results with them. Now we're all loaded up, let's hit the range. Now, I have to say, I originally was just intending to send the regulator of my rifle over to John to have it serviced. But when I contacted John Bowkit, he told me, whatever you do, do not post it over as I did in the past, because the Royal Mail seemed to like sending them away to be destroyed. So it would have to go through an RFD, Registered Firearms Dealer. And if I was going that far, I might as well send the whole rifle over to be blueprinted. Now, to find out what all John does in the blueprinting process and the current prices, you're best looking up his website as there is a whole host of stuff he can do for the gun. And I'll leave a link in the description box to his website. Now, to send the rifle from Northern Ireland to England, I had to go through a registered firearms dealer, which is expensive as it cost me £25 to have the rifle posted to England and then another £50 to have it posted back again once the work was done. OK, at just over half an inch overall size, it's probably not the best 30 yard grip I've ever shot, but the corner graph readings are far more impressive. With an average feet per second of 672, 
a total spread of only 6 feet per second over 10 shots and 15.94 foot pounds of energy. And before you ask, this gun is on my FAC. Now, whether or not you agree with the changes I've made to the rifle, I still find it a lot shorter and handier to use inside confined spaces, like a hide, and hopefully this will put more game in the bag for me. And thanks to John Bowkit, that's just what she's been doing.